Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another MOBA tutorial. Today we are going to be continuing our MOBA as per usual and we shall be um, playing around with a few things uh, first of all. So if you're looking at this, this is probably the script that um, you saw when I last left you off. As you know it's been a bit of a long time since I've done a tutorial um, for the MOBA. So this time I thought it's a lot better if we split some of this stuff up. So the first thing you'll notice about this is that um, this is the previous script. Um, this is not the new script. The new script I'm going to go over with you and it basically is the same thing. Um, basically in this one you connect to the server, you connect to a room and you spawn your character all in the same scene. But with this new one I've decided that we're going to split up both the map itself and the gameplay um, from the main menu and the networking um, just to save us a bit of time. So basically, um, as you can see, these switches and cases for the start screen that says connect, everything like that um, is all still there and it's all in the new one except this time it's a little bit different because one, we haven't actually created um, character, some components and some characters and stuff like that. So yeah, I, th I figure it's probably a lot better for you to um, learn this new method. So basically if we minimize that, that is the previous version and um, from our old game. And what I've done is started a new project and split them up so everything is completely and utterly tidy. So the resources folder is now located within an underscore resources folder in capitals right here. Um, and it doesn't matter where it is as long as everything you instantiate over the network as I've previously said is in a resources folder. So we're just kind of revisiting that and um, we're going to, t I'm, I'm not really going to teach you anything. I'm just going to go over how this works. And as always, um, all the the scripts and stuff like that will be in the description below so please just take a look and it's more important that you learn what everything does okay so we do want you to um, to take a look at those scripts um, and know exactly how it is and then go ahead and copy it if, if, if that's what you require but the first thing that you need to know is this is how it looks so if I click play and we go here. We're on this uh, nice red background. And welcome to Tater World, which is the message of the day. And server status is online. And we click play. Connecting to server. And then we select which one do we want. Well, I'll go 3v3 at Battleforge Island. And um, I know my naming conventions aren't that great. But then what happens is we get into this scene right here. And then, um, and then that's basically it. And then once we get into the scene, then we are going to have champion select. And I'm going to create that with you today, actually. So we got champ select and a bit of a modified menu that's going to be on the menu for today. It's going to be on the menu for today. I used menu twice and it didn't sound right. It's okay. Sorry, guys, um, for my uh, lame jokes. But anyway, so what I've done is created two things within this um, main menu scene. And that's basically a camera and a GUI system. Now the GUI system is just a game object, but within that there's something called the menu manager and that's the script that we're going to be looking at um, right now. So the menu manager basically is everything in this old script. It's all this first section here which says uh, click play, click uh, search, click con your connected, choose your champion and stuff like that is all in the first one. Actually choose your champion is not in the first one, it's in the next one. Um, and so what happens is basically in this GUI system which is menu manager in here, um, again, we still use um, we still use the states to change menus, and I've already explained what every single thing within this does before, so I'm not going to go on it too much. Um, basically, uh, yeah, you get to the menu, and then you go to connect to server. You pick your game type, you search for your game type, and then you go. Um, and tell everybody to start a game. The interesting thing about this is this is different because this is actually made for more than one person. Uh, my previous one was made kind of just for testing purposes, but this one is actually made for more than one person. And the way it works is that this. Okay, so before we join a random room, and then when we get into a random room, we choose our champion and we spawn our champion. But this one is different. This one goes, when we're in a room, we wait. Okay, We wait for everybody to connect. We wait until um, our lobby, playlist.length, which is an array of how many people are actually in our lobby, once that array reaches one, then it will start the game. But for now, it's 
only one. We can change that to any number. So we can have a lobby of 50 people. So once 50 so once it reaches 50 players then the game starts and that's more efficient because this is a MOBA this isn't like Call of Duty where you can start a game at any time you need to be there from start to finish and if you leave you get punished so <laughs> that's one of the things we're going to try and implement in here um, and this does work right now so when the players are equal to one which is just me because um, I'm the only one that tests this anyway um, and then we go photo network and make sure we are the master client then we send out a message using the script here. We send a message, go call the RPC start game. And if I've said it before, um, an RPC is a remote procedural call and um, screw the terminology because basically what it does is sends a message out to every single person in your lobby that says, okay, call the function start game. And since everybody's on the main menu waiting for the game to start, it will call this app, this function right here, which is called start game. And it'll change the state to 5, which means you're in-game. And that 5 doesn't do anything. It's just to make sure that we are out of this loop here. Um, we get set into 5. And then we load the level Battleforge level name. So that's basically it. Um, but the thing is, everybody loads it at the exact same time. And that's quite important. But the next thing you need to know is that, so we go, we'll play it again, just to make sure you know. So we click play, connects to the server, we click that, it searches for people, and then we've reached one, so we get put into the um, Battleforge, uh, we'll call it the lobby here, in which you are able to select your champion within, let's say, two minutes. Um, but now we need to do the champion select side and the champion select is going to be incredibly easy because it's legitimately just buttons now we can change it to textures and stuff like that and i might show you how to do textures and this if we have enough time um so basically i've already created a game manager script and if we look within the scene of um say if we look within this battleforge scene you'll notice that there's this game manager here there's nothing in the scene other than a camera, a standby camera, which is the camera that you can see when you get into the scene, and a game manager, and everything else is just for look. So we don't need to worry about these three. These three is is it can be deleted for a week here. All we want to know is that there's a camera here, and then there's a game manager here. And so in our game manager, we're going to start the script off. I've already created it, um, created the script for you. So the game manager is a game object, and then we just made, I created a new script called game manager. And then within Game Manager, there's a few things we need to do first. First of all, we are going to need to delete that camera once um, once our character is selected. We're going to need to delete the standby camera because we are then in game. Once we select our character, we get put into the game. So we want to go public um, game object, and then we want to go standby camera. All right, and then we go there. The one time. So that's one of the things that we probably need to get rid of. The other thing is we need um, maybe a s we we may need to do a state. So we'll go int uh, sorry state um, equals zero. We'll just create a state for now, and then we want to change this update to possibly on GUI because the states don't actually require any things. It's it's just more visual. So um, what we need now is we need to create a few buttons. Uh, so we go. On GUI, uh, we want to activate the switch, which is basically saying um, state there, perfect. And then we go up here and we go case when it's equal to zero, which is by default. Um, we want to give us a few options of characters that we can select. So we go if uh, GUI dot button, oh shit, uh, dot button. And then we go like that, and we just go, um, oh, and we go new, rect, and then we just give it a position. Uh, so for now, we'll just, uh, uh, just position can just be, uh, what, we'll go 40 by 40, and then we'll make it 200 wide by like 20 height. And then, within that, we're going to put in uh, the name of the champion that we want that button to represent. So, we pr I'll, I'll just go for uh, Akali, maybe. I, I, mean, I mean, I don't play Akali, but you, you get my point. And, and then we go down here, and we're going to create uh, what happens when we click this button. When we click this button, we want to call a um, spawn champion uh, or spawn player. Uh, function. So we go void. Actually, we'll make it public void. C 
because we're going to want to spawn it more than once. Um, so public void. Actually, then another one of the cases could be death. So when you reach death, it changes the state to the death case. And then you can go into, and then it's like a waiting thing. That would actually be really cool. I like that idea. So public void. Um, what should we call this? Uh, spawn player. Why not? Spawn player, and then we go these, and then we go down like that. That's wonderful, absolutely wonderful. And um, so upon spawn player, the one thing we need to do is instantiate a character. And that character needs to be represented by a string. So we want to go string, and then we'll call it character string. And then basically, so here we want to call this spawn player. And then we want to make sure that our character string, which is one, and I'll tell you why it's one, um, the character string is one because I have named it in our resources folder as one. And remember, whenever we're instantiating people, it's done by name and convention, not by drag and drop um, re recognizing the game object. So this is my character is actually called one. So we want to instantiate one, and we do this by going uh, photon network dot instan uh, instantiate. And then we go character, because it's the character name that we want, which is one. And then we go transform dot position. And then we go transform dot rotation. Rotation. Um, sorry. Um, and then we block that off. And that's basically it. But after that, what we kind of actually need to... No, 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 that's fine. Okay, so we've done that. And now we want to turn our camera off okay so we go standby camera stand by camera dot set active dot oh no not dot and in brackets we go false and then we lock that off and that's wonderful but the next thing we need to do is now we've got no camera so we can't actually see anything so we want to go f uh, uh, photon photon network network dot instantiate um, the MOBA camera, which is called MOBA cam, because in our resource folder it's got MOBA cam. So if we want to instantiate that, we'll just instantiate it in the exact same place. It doesn't matter because we're going to relocate the position. Transform dot rotation and the underscore is a zero. So it's basically the exact same thing except this is for the MOBA cam itself. And then once we get that, we actually need to know what this game object is. So we're going to go game object and then we're going to call it uh, MOBA cam like that. Like that. It's perfect. Right? And we need to get the lock position from this. So we need to go MOBA cam dot get component and then in these uh, what do you call it? Arrows bracket things. We want to get the MOBA underscore camera script and then we lock that off. We, oh, actually, MOBA underscore cam camera and we'll call it mob mob cam. This is terrible naming convention. Sorry guys if it's um thing. So basically the script um, we're trying to, we're gathering a script from this, we're getting this component which is called the, is the MOBA camera component but we are making how do I explain how this works? Cam script. How about that? So this is the script. This is what this represents, this variable here. This represents that script. And we're gathering this script from the MOBA camera that we've just instantiated, which is called MOBA cam. I don't know if that explains it well enough, to be perfectly honest. Um, but what we can do is then go mob cam script dot settings it should be in and then dot lock trans uh, lock target transform and we want that to equal the character we've just instantiated pretty much and the way we do that is we actually need to make this a game object as well so we go game object um, and we'll call this my player how about that and then we go equals la -de da and then from here we go it equals my player dot transform position and uh, we're well not position just transform and so basically that should all work and so when we spawn in it should lock itself on your character's position and then with the settings because the mobile camera has a lot of cool settings in here um, but one of them is lock target transform which locks the camera to your character's position 
um, pretty much and also keeps it at the height default height is zero for me um, default rotation is negative 60 and stuff like that so this is just my personal version also make sure that you do have a photon view or else you cannot instantiate it over the network in fact I'm not too sure why we're instantiating it over the network but I'm sure it works perfectly so we're just going to click play here and then see what happens we, yep, we get given the option Akali um, Hang on, so we get given that one option. And if you ever want to create a new button, pretty much, all you need to do is copy and paste that code. And we go, if, um, we should actually get rid of that. Um, we'll go, uh, like that, maybe, for example. And then if we click save that, and there should be two, but they're all on the same place. We need to change the position. So we need to change this number right here to, let's say it's 20, so we need a plus 30, which means it makes it 70. And then they should be underneath each other, and it should look kind of okay. But it won't work now, because we haven't actually connected to anything. So if I click Akali, it says, the variable standby camera of game object has not been assigned. And that is not what I wanted to see. <laughs> <laughs> that is completely not what I wanted to see. So if we go to Game Manager, ah, I see, because it's a public component, and we want to drag our camera, standby camera, onto the standby camera variable here. And so pretty much it will turn it off once we click Akali. It should. And then there we go. And we can't instantiate it because we're not in a room yet. Um, so we can't instantiate anything. And system string character, yeah. So basically we can't instantiate anything um, because we haven't connected to a network. But if we start it from our other scene, which is our main menu scene, which handles all the networks, we can click play. We can choose our game type. We get into the game and we can choose the Kali and it spawns it immediately. But this is not out. Why is this not out? I know why this is not out because it's still running that same loop um, over here. So we want to change this also to state equals one. We'll just add that to it. And for example, state equals one. Right there as well. And then we gotta add state one, which means nothing. And we'll just comment this to say in game. In game. And that's basically it. Because this should all work flawlessly now. And basically what we started with is now what we have. <laughs> so well, that made no sense whatsoever. But hopefully this helped, guys. And if we click Akali, yep, it's perfect. It instantiates. And there is absolutely not a single problem to be found. If there's a problem on yours, then I suggest you leave me a comment. And I'll try my best to answer every single comment I get. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. And that was a wonderful tutorial. This character has absolutely no features on it so far. But we are going to add some features. And I'm going to teach you how to construct your very own character. And it's going to be Neato Cheeto. And um, yeah, have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.